Now, when I got this thing, it was a complete mess. Not bad, but it, I could tell, I, I could feel it in the feed ring and things like that just uh, were feeling a little gritty and grimy. As far as operation, there's a gentleman on YouTube, his uh, YouTube channel, Ox Tool. He does a, a video on using one of these Chandler duplexes. He'll give you some good information. He's got good videos on a lot of different things. I like watching this him. This is a little different than what he's using. Is This is the Model D. I think his might be a Model D. Very similar as far as the main body. The only difference is on the D and the bigger uh, size is the bottom slide anyway. And that's adjustable. So uh, remember, I'm not an expert here, but what I did is I, I disassembled this thing and learned a little bit about it, thought I would pass that information on. I was gonna uh, grease it and oil it and everything and put it all back together. But um, since I, I was searching for information, I didn't find very much out there except for what Oxtool did and a couple other things on Practical Machinists. By the way, I'm practical, practical Machinists, um, this is part of a brochure that somebody has provided a link to the full brochure and it gives us a parts list which I'm going to use to cheat with so I can remember nomenclature and um, some other information about these uh, particular boring facing heads. So anyway, mine's a Model D. Model D 68. Now I'm not sure what the 68 means. That might mean 1968? I don't know. Serial number on there, etc. Made in the good old USA. Okay. Now, a couple of questions I saw other guys having uh, was dimensions and sizes or things like that. And I've seen a bunch of these on uh, up for sale. Not a bunch, but a few up for sale. They didn't have this piece. And normally this piece was missing here, this little, um, oh, let me look that up. Uh, J is the clutch pin. Would have been missing. And there should be a set screw in there. Uh, you take the set screw out, put your little short handle on there, and then you could hold the handle instead of holding the ring when it's spinning. Uh, or put a rod down to, uh, to capture that, and then that, that'll do the feed for you. Um, anyway, uh, that's all that is. Now, I thought I'd notice that some of them had a locking, a locking, uh, screw for this piece here, but, uh, mine, mine doesn't have that, of course. So, um, let's just disassemble this a little bit and see what we got. I'm going to probably fast forward through some of this and... I don't know, I could ramble on for a long time about something, so I, I don't want to bore you too much. We'll try and keep this uh, short. On this, this size and bigger, this bottom piece is able to slide by loosening those screws. Now, I don't know, I don't think you want to get it way out here, but uh, that'll give you an option of increasing your diameter if you want to do that. This is going to have the automatic feed is going to have a one inch travel. Uh, so uh, this gives you a little extra if you want to offset it. So basically that just comes off with a couple of these screws here. Slips right off of there. And that's what that looks like. Now I've seen a couple of these sell on eBay where this is all that was was up for sale. And they didn't have this lower block. So if you're looking at these, this is part of the whole system here. Uh, just so you don't buy one by mistake, if you're not sure what's all supposed to come with it, this should be part uh, of it. The other question a lot of guys I seen had was whether the shank is removable. Um, I guess if I was a manufacturer, I would, I would uh, think it would be wise to make all of them removable. So I don't know enough about boring heads to uh, tell you whether they are or not, 
but on this particular one before I started cranking on stuff to take it apart uh, and try and get the shake off because I like that idea I can, instead of the R8 I could put a, a Morse taper on there or something uh, for the lathe if I wanted to um, but I decided to to disassemble from the bottom and by looking up in there I could see that this was threaded on there and I'll show you how I saw that on this particular one okay this is our slide stop screw this is a 31.8 millimeter long it doesn't need to be any longer than that because the travel is only one inch anyway uh, for your feet. That's going to get bottomed out when you set it up. Now you'll need a bunch of these Allen wrenches because they're all there's all kinds of different sizes. Um, but this gets bottomed out and then you would make an adjustment with this neural locking neural nut here uh, to how far you want that bottom assembly to slide over and then it would hit the side of this and stop. Basically that you just unscrew that and that comes off. Let me widen out my shot here. So then I just went about taking apart you know taking some of this stuff off here and these are your gib locking or your slide locking screws just coming out of there you don't need to crank those down tight you just want to tighten them up snug just snug a little bit to give a little bit of a uh, so your dovetail doesn't flip flop around this here is a uh, what is this it doesn't say in our schematics here but um, this is like a stop pin we'll, we'll take a look at that after we get this off and now we can look inside there and see there's that there's that pin that sits in front of the um, let me see here are uh, the feed nut there's your feed screw feed nut there's a slot in the feed nut that straddles this and then comes to a stop at a certain point so that's keeping it from going too far falling out of there clutch pin I take some quick measurements I'm using a millimeter here and what we're gonna look at is just a couple of basic sizes 33.35 millimeter the diameter of this is going to depend on your worm gear, the holes that are in that. Um, but you want this, I'm going to assume you want this diameter to be not a snug fit in those holes, but, but a close fit. Um, that way uh, there's going to be less backlash when it's turning and, and uh, capturing this. You'll, we'll see how that works here in a minute. So a 4.71 um, the thread length is approximately 12.8 and then the pin length is about the same so that gives you a little bit of an idea of what that piece is all about it's a little knurled uh, knob on there and we'll, we'll see how that functions now with this out of there I can feed this from here a lot quicker and what I'm gonna do is just keep turning this and feeding this I want to feed this uh, bottom slide off of there which way was I going anyway okay 
There's our bottom slide, dovetail slide here with our feed nut. There's that, that groove that this pin would stop it from going too far. Now you can take that off by yanking that out of there. I decided to leave that on. I didn't want to monkey with that. It, uh, it's got a little bit of a gap here, so uh, any little twist in there, I decided just to leave it alone. Um, it, it appears that it's pretty straight. Uh, little adjustment here for the thread tightness, which it feels pretty good right now. Now, when you're looking in here, Let's see if I can get a light. I'm going to get a light. So look at in here. I don't know if that's helping. So what I was looking for was I was looking for threads. Uh, I got in there real close with the loop and I was checking to see what that center hole was like and that was had some threads on the end and I knew that I could unthread this. Checking the, the direction of the threads um, last thing you want to do, I think, is put this in your mill, put a strap wrench around it, start cranking on it when it's, uh, uh, the shaft is part of the body of the boring head, and you start twisting stuff or breaking your machine. Anyway, so then I knew that it was uh, threaded on, and I, that's what I did. I put it in the mill, put the brake on, put a... Uh, I had a uh, oil filter remover <laughs> that I clamped on there and I just kind of gave it a little bit of a jerk and it popped, popped loose. And I'll do the same thing reassembling it and I think that, I think it will be tight enough. I'll have to keep an eye on it. If not, then I'll put some sort of a thread locker on there, low temperature thread locker that uh, will keep it from spinning off. Because you'll use this in reverse. We have our top, uh, what's this, the bevel ring? I think this is the bevel collar. This is made uh, supposedly a heavy, medium to heavy oil in here to lubricate the, the uh, bronze bushings, those areas, and the collar up on here. So, oil in that area. Now this will get set back on there with this oil plug right over this worm pinion so it'll drip down and through and then it will also um, run down here to this uh, sleeve bearing area on the body and then drip through that porthole down into this sleeved area underneath inside of there. Um, so all that ends up getting lubricated through that one little uh, hole there. Now as far as the the worm and the worm pinion shaft up in here um, and the feed nut and feed screw, those all appeared to have a heavy uh, type of grease Just on tipping there. this over. This is coming right out. And we have our, what we're calling the worm pinion shaft. And they also call this the uh, thrust, okay, the thrust washer. So there's a washer on there, thrust washer. Fits up over this bronze bushing. Take the dial off. I'm not sure what they're calling it. I might need to. Yeah, I got to put this in just a little bit to, so I can hold it. Oh boy. Oh here, duh. All right, so I stick the, there's another thing I don't have with it is there should be an Allen wrench. I 
this with a T-handle, and I've even seen them with a the little uh, handle that comes out like this for a fast crank, fast adjustment, instead of a fine adjustment. There. Simple as that. <laughs> okay. Now that'll come off. Your dial. Now we can see the the hole that this pin threads threads through this one and just slides through that one into the worm gear. Now the worm gear comes out. Let's see in there. I do this with one hand. I'm going to turn the worm. You see the holes. There's six holes around the, the diameter of that. And those are the holes that this pin ends up getting into. So if I turn this Let's see. Okay, so that's free moving. Put that in. And then what it does is it locks all this together. Then our worm starts to work. So our, our fine adjustment and our adjustment with our collar. Let me see. Okay, since our worm drive or pinion shaft fits through here and our collar goes on here. Our adjustment with this locked in there ends up being uh, this operation right here. So that'll do a fine adjustment or while that's spinning in your mill you're grabbing that sleeve and everything else is turning uh, it's your fine adjustment for feeding out when you're facing or feeding out diameter. just to get a larger for your next bore. So this has to be in there into one of those holes and all the way and all the way screwed in. And then this locks together and everything, all this functions. When this comes out, this just free spins. So this isn't going to do anything. It's not going to move anything. The only way you're going to move it then is through the end here. You put an Allen wrench, and this is your fast feed right here. And that's going to turn your feed screw by doing it that way. So that's the, that's the ticket there. Uh, pretty cool. I learned a lot going through this. And like I said, not that I know anything, but I learned a little bit. And I, since I had it apart, like I said, I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of, of what it looks like and how those things uh, function. Now I'm going to put it all back together and put it to the test. I got a couple of projects I'm thinking about that would require a... A boring head and I thought uh, having the facing capability would be kind of nice um, just in case well hey thanks for watching uh, don't don't send me any messages wondering about your boring head because I probably <laughs> know I'm not an expert but I just uh, wanted to show everybody this part of it and then tied in with ox tool I'll put his link down in the description um, and then I'll put a link to the page for this information and hopefully that helps you deal with yours or uh, give you an idea what to expect when you're looking for one.